Hey everybody, Jam Creates here doing another comic review. Getting this thing going again. It's been a while, I know, but I just did a review of uh, Voidwalker, and now I'm going to review something else. We're going to get this thing going back on track again, all right? Don't, don't call it a comeback. We're trying to get this thing going again. All right, so I am going to review today Terra Olympus, which I got through a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo. Um... If you're curious, all I, you know, I got, um, the book and I got this neat, uh, postcard, banner, whatever you want to call it, um, which I will probably be hanging down by my art table and stuff. Um, so anyway, uh, let's get into this. This was one that I kind of stumbled across, um, thanks to, uh, social media. Um, you know, it, this is what happens sometimes with these indie books and with crowdfunding and stuff like that. So, uh, again, I'm going to try and keep these videos shorter than they used to be. Like, yeah, a lot of them used to be pretty long. I'm going to try and get to the point and, and, and get in and get out. Because uh, I've got so many things going on uh, between work, family, the YouTube channel, and putting together Indie Comics Underground, my free online zine all about independent and crowdfunded comics. Link below if you would like to subscribe. Subscribers get early access before anyone else, and then it gets posted later on the wider internet. Okay, so anyway, back to the book. Terra Olympus, uh, science fiction book, sounded interesting. I figured, yeah, let me check it out. I like the art. So I said, yeah, what the heck, I'll give it a shot. So it is written by, first, well, first off, I wanna say, uh, since I'll do a little bit of a, a I guess a product review as, as far as, a, as well as a comic review, um, good quality on the, uh, the cardstock and all that stuff. And the interesting thing about this one was it came all the way from Australia and it got here really fast. I was honestly really surprised how quickly it came when he made the announcement, you know, Hey, we're shipping out books. And then boom, it was like at my house. Like my, my wife texted me a photo. She's like, what'd you get from Australia? I'm like, Whoa, you know, <laughs> like, so that was pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, um, so Terra Olympus, um, nice quality cover. It's got this, you know, the square binding so you can put it on your bookshelf. Um, I'm, I'm just a word of warning. I'm super like overtired today. So I may get a little silly on my videos today. Um, written by Steven. I'm going to say Coke because I don't want to be rude and I have to be very careful now because I'm doing comic book reviews and who knows with that whole copa thing and everything else i don't want to get in trouble uh so no but uh, for real i don't know how to pronounce your name i'm sorry if i messed it up but i'm believing it's probably stephen coke um and illustrated by von randall who i really don't to be honest i don't know a whole lot about these pe these people but you know i i just took a shot you know sometimes you just got to take a chance on things and see like how do they come out you know or is it good is it not good what do you what do you think so um, the one thing with like the, the square binding like this that I like is when they have the little notch there, you want a crease there so you can fold the pages over. Although I do sometimes get a little like, oh, but I don't want to mess up the cover, you know. Uh, so anyway, there's a little prologue in here first that just kind of gives you a taste of what you can expect. And first and foremost, I just want to point out the art. I love the art in this book. I really do. This is like a super cool, crazy amount of detail. Um, like for real, like just look at these backgrounds and stuff like, like seriously, like that's two, first of all, that's two separate backgrounds. You can tell they were drawn completely separate. Like that's freaking awesome. Like this, this, this team took their time and really like went all out to make like a super cool detailed book. Like, look at this stuff. Great, like act, like great, just really great, like motion and everything. Like just a lot of really, really nice stuff. Nice panel layouts and everything. Like, really good stuff. Um, so then the prologue ends. Um, and then you actually get to the, the meat of the story. Um, and the art does change a, a hair. Um, I'm not sure if... If I had to take a guess, because it is the same artist, but if I had to take a guess, my guess is... And I don't know, I could be completely wrong, and so this could just be, be me talking on my butt, but... This looks like it was inked in a different style than the than the uh, prologue is. The prologue almost looks to me like pencils that were faked as inks later in Photoshop, which 
I've done myself on certain pieces, and it usually works fine. I mean, honestly, it looks really good, so I'm not going to complain about it if that's what they did. Um, and it, you could just say it's a little bit jarring when you turn the page, and it's it looks a little bit different. Um, but it's still the same quality. Like, that's the thing. Like, the, art, the artistic quality in this book is really top-notch. And, like, you really, it's, it's really good stuff. And um, so I'll get to the story. This, it's about this, this space station, and apparently Earth is gone, wiped out. We're not entirely told the whole story uh, about what happened to Earth, but we're put on this space station, and we're introduced to the people who work on board. Um, basically, they are the maintenance crew who work on this station called Terra Olympus, and their job is to keep it running so that the, the human race that lives on board the station can stay alive. Um, you know, they, they explain some of the systems and redundancies that they've got in place to keep everyone safe. And, you know, it's, it's a nice bit of world building science fiction that I, I do appreciate because I am a, I've always been a big science fiction uh, nerd and, you know, I love Star Trek um especially next generation deep space nine like all that stuff like i you know so it's it's fun to see like you know some of the stuff i mean i like gundam too so when you start talking about like space colonies and that kind of stuff always gets me excited uh, <laughs> but uh so they talk about this stuff the one thing i will say is this first issue um is a lot of setup uh there's a lot of just setting up the world is it there's a new there's a new crew member introduced to the crew and our main character Mia has to show her around and teach her what's going on. And this is why I don't do videos with one hand anymore like this. Uh, <laughs> but like, check this out. Like, look at all the background, like, like super cool stuff, like really neat. Um, and they explain a lot of what's going on and how the station works and all that stuff. But the thing is, you don't really get to the meat of the plot until really like almost near the end. Uh, and in fact, it is very near the end where there is, we find out there are the mechanics, the engineers, people like these, these folks who, you know, they work in their job is to repair. Like I said, their job is to repair the station, keep it running, keep everything going smoothly. And then there are expedition teams who are sent out on missions to explore and possibly find another world like Earth for the humans to settle on so that they don't have to stay in the space station. Um, maybe they can find a place to actually go live. Um, and our, our new crew member here, she actually wanted to be one of the, uh, on the expedition team, uh, but she doesn't get, she's, she's not, she's assigned to the engineering and, and that's fine, whatever. You could see her, her regret. And it, it's, it's a nice little setup for explaining to you what, the expedition team is because later later on we get to meet like the leader of an expedition team and we see an expedition ship leaving and there's definitely more i don't see so here's the thing you know me i don't like to spoil stuff and i'm hoping that this did well enough that they are going to to do an issue two um they say in the back volume two is coming soon see it says volume two coming soon so my hope is that it did really is it did well enough and and they say it's currently in production so i'm hoping it's coming i'm looking forward to it to be honest um there's a bit of as the book goes on again i don't really want to spoil anything but there's a, a couple of twists at the end that really pick up the story it picks up the pace it picks up the action makes you feel like oh here's where we're going okay um there's a lot of like i said explanation which maybe they could have cut down on but i do kind of i did kind of enjoy it honestly like so you know, uh, the fact is, is I like the book and I like where it's going and I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens next. Um, and sometimes that happens with first issues, you know, first volumes, you, you kind of, it's a lot of setup. They've got to build the world. They've got to introduce you to the world. Um, and they do that and they do a good job of that. Um, and it is enjoyable while they're doing it. So I really, you know, I would personally, if you're a big science fiction fan, I would absolutely recommend this book. Um... If you're not a sci-fi fan, I I can't tell you, you might as well just stay away because it wouldn't really make much sense. Um, it is hardcore sci-fi, and I enjoy that. Um, and I'm really looking forward to see where it goes. There's some twists and turns, like I said, at the end. Uh, the action picks up, the plot picks up, the pace picks up, and then suddenly there's like, oh boy, 
Okay, here, here's where we're going. And I don't want to ruin it for you in case you do decide to get it. I don't know if you can still get it in demand or anything like that. Um, my hope would be that they've got extra copies so that when they put out Volume 2, you would be able to get Volume 1 and 2, um, which would be a good choice for people who are only hearing about this book now. So the art, Von Randall, I'm going to have to look you up because your art I love. It's really fantastic. Um... The writing is good. The characters are good. That's the thing. Like, the character writing is really good. I think the plot could have been... The pace could have been picked up a little bit, but I'm not going to really complain too much about it because I do enjoy the world building, especially in science fiction. Uh, so, anyway, I'm going to say I absolutely would recommend this book if you're a science fiction fan. If you're not a science fiction fan, just stay away. It's not for you. Um, but really good quality. And I just want to mention, if um, Steven is out there... The paper is very smooth. Uh, it's got this nice smooth paper that they were bragging about. And it's good. It's good paper. Um, so anyway, uh, that's it. You can um, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. I'm at jam underscore creates. Um, you can sign up for Indie Comics Underground down below. Uh, the link will be there. You can sign up, so make sure you get early access. Uh, and that's it. I'll talk to you guys soon. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed. If you're over on BitChute and you're watching this on BitChute, subscribe on there, man. You know, because YouTube may be going away at some point. I don't know. There's all kinds of weird stuff happening on YouTube right now. So definitely check me out on BitChute. I've got some cool folks on BitChute who like to get engaged and talk on the videos, you know, in the comments. And that's awesome. Let me know in the comments if you picked up this book and what you thought of it. Um, and that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Peace out.